here's my 15 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. Uh, I, this is the second video. Uh, the first one I showed the engine tore apart and cleaned up, and uh, I just got the parts to put this back together. Here's the uh, the new piston and connecting rod. If you remember from the last video, I said that I was going to reuse the old piston, but um, after taking some measurements, I decided to uh, buy a new piston. The old one, I think, was a little bit out of round. Uh, so I put that together, put the rings on it, and uh, reused the same pin um, and put the new connecting rod on. Came with special the connecting rod came with special instructions about how it supposed to be installed and I followed them and got that together. Um, I also put the two valves back into the head with the new keeper and uh, have them set in place. Uh, I got a gasket set for this engine. This is the head gaskets here and some gaskets here for the carburetor. Uh, this is a valve cover gasket here. This goes on top of the the valves here. Um, they give you multiple gaskets for the oil sump, and uh, you use the different thicknesses to get the correct amount of end play with the crankshaft. When I put that in, I'll figure that part out later. Hopefully I only need one or two of these, not all of them. Here I have the uh, piston back into the cylinder with the connecting rod attached. As you can see it's poking out through the case there. There's a little arrow and a notch on this piston that has to point to the flywheel end, which is this end of the motor here with the stator. Uh, this is where the ignition module goes. Um, so I have that in correctly. I use this homemade ring compression tool which is nothing more than just a piece of sheet metal from a piece of duct work and uh, a hose clamp here. Uh, it worked really nice. This red stuff here is this uh, assembly lube that I got from the auto parts store um, that I'm putting on every place that two pieces of metal rub to uh, help with lubrication until the motor runs for a few minutes and the oil gets to splash up on everything since all the parts now are completely clean and oil free uh, so this will hopefully help it run for the first few minutes until the engine oil gets all up through the case here we have the uh, connecting rod is connected to the crankshaft here I just slid that in and uh, there's a little arm here that works the synchro balancer slid that on the pin slid the crank rod in and then uh, hook the connecting rod to it and torque the two screws to the specs and uh, that set the crankshaft and connecting rod in place here you can see I have the cam installed and uh, I have the cam timing set by these two little dots. You can see that they line up from tooth to tooth. Okay, I put the cam gear in which you saw. The oil slinger was set in place and the sump housing was set back in and that pretty much wraps up the bottom part of this engine rebuild. Now I just have to do the head, the flywheel, the uh, PTO pulley that runs the lawnmower and I'll start working on that. Okay, you can see that I've installed the head now. I, uh, I've also temporarily installed the drive pulley and uh, I made this piece of plywood here uh, and drilled the holes that correspond with the mounting points to the engine. You see the holes that the engine used mounts to the mower. And uh, I mounted the pulley, bolted that in place and I've actually screwed the pulley to this piece of wood to stop the engine from turning because I'm about to perform a cylinder 
leak down test which uh, you set the cylinder at top dead center you keep the two valves closed which I have done here by taking the lifters off and you actually fill the combustion chamber with air you use uh, have this regulator set to 100 psi and um, this regulator here I'll tell you the pressure inside the combustion chamber there's a little male to male coupling between these two gauges that I actually filled with JB Weld to completely seal it and then took a 40 thousandths drill bit and drilled a tiny pinhole between the two that allows enough air to fill the cylinder but not so much air passing through that it uh, uh, affects this gauge here so with 100 psi of air coming in this gauge will tell you the psi of the cylinder and the difference between the two will tell you the percentage of leak down in the cylinder like if I have this set at 100 and this gauge shows 90, 90 psi that means that 10 percent of the pressure in the engine is getting leaked from somewhere and you can tell if it's either getting leaked from the exhaust port which means that the exhaust valve is bad or the intake port which is on the other side which means the intake valve is bad it usually just means they need to be reseated or if the rings are bad this air will get between the cylinder and into the case and you'll actually feel air coming out of the crankcase breather um, you'll feel air coming out between the cylinder and the head if your head gasket's going bad so uh, let me hook this thing up and let's see what we get okay I have my gauge here set at 100 psi and you can see that this gauge is reading between 94 and 96 psi about 95 psi so that means I have a 5% loss of pressure in the engine uh, which is fairly decent for a new newly rebuilt engine um, it's not going to go be going in a race car so you know I think anything less anything you know that holds at least 90% with less than 10% leak down would probably be fine for just a lawnmower engine but that's good it means my valves are seating correctly and my head gasket sealed nice and the rings are sealing good since I didn't have any air coming out of either the exhausts or through the breather now uh, you will the the air is leaving somewhere I mean it's probably a small amount in each of these points but it's not so great that I would worry about it uh, it wasn't a whole lot of air coming out of anything, if any at all. I couldn't even feel any air moving, so um, I think that did pretty good. And here it is, all back together, sheet metal all back on, the carburetor is back in place with the oil filter, the exhaust is all put back on, starter there, pulley back on, all the engine wiring's all complete put the spark plug in and uh, gonna see if I can plop this baby back in the mower and uh, hopefully I can get it to run okay, I put the motor back in the lawnmower here got the uh, gas and oil in it don't have a battery so I'm using jumper cables off my truck that's what you hear in the background so let's see if I can get this motor here to start up Pass the compression stroke here. 